set your butane torches to high and your expectations to low. Coming to you live from just the tip cigars in the hills of the Steel City. Get ready to get your fix. This is the Cigar Junkies Podcast. Welcome to the Cigar Junkies Podcast. The cigar show for the community by the community. A forum that talks stogies, booze, food, and anything else in cigar lifestyle. If you're looking for ratings, negativity, reviews, or authority on all things cigars, you came to the wrong place. Whether you like what you hear or not, please join the conversation and let us know by finding us at the Cigar Junkies Facebook group or emailing us at thecigarjunkies at gmail.com. What's, What's up, junkies? Here we go, here we go, here we go again. Yeah. I'm Corey. I'm Sam. That's him. He's over there. He's in a cowboy hat. And uh, we are the Cigar Junkies. And uh, if you're hanging with us this morning, like my man Troy Harper, that means you are too. But we'll get to more of that later on. Um, first, I'd say we should probably go ahead No, in our new format, Gloria says it is. Mm-hmm. And let the kids at home know uh, what we're smoking. What do you think about that? Is that okay? I finally got mine lit. Yeah, let's go. It's time for the Cigar of the Week, brought to you by Leaning House Fine no, Cigars. The Leaning House is your destination for the ultimate cigar smoking experience. <laughs> Shut up, Sam. <laughs> you want to just start again. Hey, what's up, junkies? Hi. And what are we smoking? I really did think that was the right one. It's time for the Cigar of the Week, brought to you by Just the Tip Cigars. Are you looking for the best selection of boutique cigars? Do you want the tried and true legacy brands that are synonymous with the cigar lifestyle? Do you want luxurious cutters, lighters, and other accessories? Do you want to relax in the most comfortable cigar lounge in the Berg? Then you want Just the Tip Cigars. Conveniently located in the Bavarian Village Shopping Center in South Park, Pennsylvania, Just the Tip Cigars has been tailor-built to your smoking needs. Whether you visit in person or on the web at justthetipcigars.com, when it comes to cigars, Just the Tip is the whole package. The whole package, baby. The whole package. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. F- uh, I, I, I don't know. I got nothing. I, You're I all out I, of sorts, aren't you? No, man. I, I thought I had it. Um, I, I just didn't look at my notes like yeah. I thought I knew who did what. And, Dude, and meanwhile, I, Sam's over here. Zero like, judgment. Sam's like, damn it. I paid for these. Yeah. I'm getting the credit. <laughs> I want my cred. <laughs> Give me my commercial. I want commercial. my cred. <laughs> Conveniently located. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We are smoking the Rojas Unfinished Business. This is a 6x52 Toro box press. This is not in the round, unlike me. Uh, This has an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and fillers from Nicaragua and Mexico. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never did. uh, You could ignore the stuff about Forte y Libre. I figured Uh, as much. Yeah, because I I didn't have anything specifically to put in there in regard to the like Rojas' background this time. Yeah. So... um, I just never got around to, to finding anything. I think we've covered Rojas so many we, times we, on here, too. Like We've done it a few times, yeah, because lots of tacos. You know lots I mean? of tacos. Yeah, so. we did do. Have we done all five? Of the tacos? Mm-hmm. I know we did all three oh, in one sitting through. of the, the breakfast, breakfast tacos. tacos. Sure did. Because I don't remember if we did the other ones. We like big breakfasts. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a good one, too. Yeah. Um, I, uh, my doctor, not much caring for my big breakfast uh uh, shenanigans. No, not so much. Well, he's like, look, take the Blackstone, which you would have made, and do half. Maybe something like that. So, <laughs> as, speaking of which, we have a Blackstone update. Yeah, no, um, I have, have not yet. She's going out of town again, all that jazz. So, luckily, it's been pushed to the wayside for a little bit. But I mean, you'll find yourself just being like, you know what? I'm gonna cook, but for I'm myself. Never there. It's yeah. So. Need to get the little guy, the little portable guy that I have that you yeah. can just bring over here just and just back like, and forth it. Yeah, just like uh, I don't know, set it up in the entryway. Yeah, you know what I mean. You could have it like right in there. Yeah. Why does the shop smell like bacon all the time? Is that a problem? Yeah, I would. I don't think you'd get any complaints about that. No, as not. long as there's actually bacon about, and it's not just like a, yeah. a, a scented candle. Yeah, that, I could see that causing like a serious amount of rage. Which is like the real problem with scented candles, isn't it? We like how I keep giving you the camera every time you try to sip your coffee. Like every single time. It's, it's every single. I'm like, just. Yeah. I mean, they know you're going to drink it. Too. Yeah. It, it's, it's part of the game. Yeah. They're like, oh, no, I don't want to see him put his mouth on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Oh. So, so have, you, no have you had this one before? I have not. 
now. Uh, I, I'm going to be real with you. So I started a little bit before you. I think I might have had a little void in the beginning because it did not start oh, well. Yeah. And the draw wasn't fantastic, but it's it's getting more gooder. Yeah, draw on mine's open. It's a semi-closed foot when it starts. Um, but, I mean, that shouldn't be that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Yeah, it, it's it's actually cleaning up, and the taste is improving. But yeah. like honestly, the first the first couple hits, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be a poo cigar. Yeah, uh, I, no, not not. I mean, I've <laughs> two never, weeks in a row. I've, no, I've never had a Rojas that I haven't mm-hmm. liked um, with without fail. Like I mm-hmm. like Rojas for sure. So, like, I'm not concerned that that this is not gonna be a, the cigar that I like. You know? Yeah, is, is does this cigar come in the round as well? I have no idea. Okay. Um, I know when it was released, it was only released in this size. Okay. Um, you you specified to me that it was the box press, so I wondered if you had information. I just wanted it, you know, to be part of the information that we deliver. No, actually, the um, funny enough, this is my least favorite of the Rojas lineup. Um, I wasn't going to bring it in. It's nothing wrong with it. It just was my least favorite, but it is not what I remember it being. Um. And on top of that, I never would have guessed Sumatra wrapper. Like, looking at it, yeah, it aesthetically gives it that, but it's got a bit more punch than you would think Yeah, uh, from a normal Sumatra. It's got a nice little kick to her. Well, here's the thing, too. Just because the cigar happens to be not for you and not for me. Oh, yeah. It actually, especially not for me, means it's for more people than it is right. not. <laughs> right. You're, you're a little bit... Diversified, More, yeah. You have a tendency to like my older stuff um, a little bit more than I. Yeah. So now I was um, thinking about it the other day, and uh, I was just completely derailed on what my thought was a second ago. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I love I had, it. You know why I had to answer is because she could be calling to tell me about some catastrophic yeah oh yeah failure. Yeah. On the show, because last time she reached out, it was that horrible Back feedback and feed, loop. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. And and it took a while for me to get that and for Jason to figure it out. So, like, normally, no, I'd yeah. be like, shoot a text, but I'm What's like, up? this could be relevant. You yeah, know? no, we, we've learned. Um, <laughs> no, it, like you said, it, there's a lot of cigars I don't care for that I carry here. Um, but being the least popular, my least favorite from him still doesn't mean it's anything wrong with it it just you know of all of his stuff this is the one that hits me the least um but he it's an excellent blend the there's a little bit of a a bite to it but nothing spectacular over the top i mean just nicaragua showing itself so i like when nicaragua shows itself you like that little bit of a zing to it (laughs) um yeah so i think we're all sorted here but uh uh it looks like they're all in box press. It's, yeah. it, the, the, I don't see any specificity on... There's four sizes, and I see nothing that differentiates... That says it is or that, isn't. That some are box press and some are not. So you yeah. have a 6x46, uh, which is the uh, Cuban uh, Corona. Then you have a 5.5x42, which is just the normal Corona. Then we have the Toro that we're smoking now, 6x50. And there is a five by fifty robusto, so no no specifications in regard to uh, shape. So my assumption is that they're all box pressed. Yeah, I am checking real quick to see if it says it on the info packet from them. Yeah, all of them are box pressed. So this should have been a uh, if you want to keep your branding correct. I think this should have been a completely unfinished foot. Yeah. Not a closed foot. It should have been an unfinished foot. Yeah, I just left a shaggy, unfinished 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 business. business, You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Uh, No, this this one, when I was at PCA, uh, I think it was launched at PCA, that one. uh, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, likely. But the branding for this is kind of fun because it's a cowboy. That's, you know, it's. I think I've got the poster over there somewhere finally. Cowboy, baby. Yeah, it's there. There, there is kind of like a. It's very the one that I found with the cowboy on it because that's kind of what I was going for whenever I made the um, the banner ad for this week. Yeah, um, and there was one that very much reminded me of this uh, Sinistro Last Cowboy. Yeah, so yeah, very similar in that. Um, I'm actually I can see this sign behind you. Hey Ryan, can you grab the Rojas sign sitting there? 
it's the, it's right behind the barrel top. Behind the barrel top, we'll be having some fun. Yeah, I feel like I didn't yeah. even notice the Western theme because of my giant face. hand. Yeah. So yeah. In, initially, I was trying to do it, and that's the one that I found. Yeah. Um, but and and I was trying to do something like that. I had a picture of like a showdown. Yeah. And I was going to try to include it, but the problem was the colors. Um, just blended way too much with everything else that I had in the banner ad. And just like, it and just so needed. I had to kind of bring other stuff to the forefront. Yeah. Plus, plus I didn't, I'll be honest with you. I didn't work that hard on that one. <laughs> you said I did. I didn't give it I, my all. I was like, eh, eh, is anybody really looking at these? Like it really, I could just put up a post that says this is what we're smoking if I really wanted to. So. Uh, I think, I think they're admired. Like, it definitely gets more views than anything else we post is the banner every time. I will say that uh, uh, Mike Dove and the team did a really nice job on your latest graphic. I'll give you a uh, a little free bump here for uh, the, the which shop. Uh, Sam wants to know. Oh yeah, they did. It, it's a really really well done. It's clean, of right? You. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's no, very they, nice. It's the cleanest picture of you I've ever seen. Yeah, they didn't. I, I have no idea where it's from either. That's the best part. I just like I randomly anytime. Brick gets a picture of me, or somebody gets a picture of me with a cigar. I just send them to him, so he has like a file. Of I was going to say, if you don't know where it's, does that make you concerned about what other photos he may or may not have? Hmm. I'd be concerned. Uh, it's generally always a concern. There, there's there's some stuff out there floating around that I'm not so proud of, but you know we're not going to discuss that today. He's full of crap. He's proud of everything that he's got out there. <laughs> don't you worry about that. <laughs> don't you worry about that at all. He is proud as a papa. So Troy commented on our last video. And Troy, got, who's Troy? Troy Harper. <laughs> um, but he's got the gospel saint of the cigar junkies. <laughs> well, I figured we'd give him a shout out because yeah. he's got two podcasts he does, right? He's got Dropping the Ash yeah. and then Har- Harper Cigar. I cannot talk today. Harper Cigar Lounge. Troy, we, we should get some clarification on that is because it used to, Harper Cigar Lounge used to be the podcast and the group. And I'm wondering if he kept the group name and then changed the podcast name to Dropping the Ash. Ooh. I'm not really sure. I think this yeah. just might have been how he was he was titling his live videos up until now. <laughs> he said and soon a third, so I'm guessing that they're oh, okay. you know you must different. Ignore everything I say like normal. <laughs> it's all wrong. Uh, you gotta love that delay. Like you're in the middle of asking a question, he's answering it. It's spectacular. So it's it's funny too. So from the producer seat perspective, um, we have like uh, helpful information page on Facebook, right? That shows us uh, essentially a monitor of what the live is yeah. seeing, right? It tells you how long it's been going and it gives you all your comments. And it's actually a really convenient feed. But what I need is to like crop out the live from OBS and stick it over the video because the video is on a delay. So I think oh. I have to change the camera and I push it and, and nothing happens. And then you got to push it like three more times. That's at, yeah. funny. I didn't even think about that. You were Rick and Morty, right? You like Rick and Morty. Oh yeah. You seen the one where he was go goes, uh, Morty, can you please go flip the uh, leftmost light switch for me, please? And he, f- he goes over there. He goes leftmost and here, click and nothing happens. And then click and then the lights go out and then another click. And he goes, okay, turn him back on here quick again. He goes, okay. I think what I heard was you mistakenly pushing the wrong switch, pushing the correct switch, and then trying to sneakily uh, <laughs> correct flip the this first. switch that you erroneously put in the first place without me saying, so like, is that what happened? He's like, yeah, that's about the gist that's of that's it. That's about the gist of it. He's like, all right, get, pack your stuff. He's like, what are you talking about? They go to the storage locker, and there's all these bodies that are, like, oh. in stasis, and they're all beep dead. <laughs> yep. And yeah. So my, my goal today is to not sound like uh, Morty because I got some kind of allergy thing kicking this week. So my voice is desperately trying to crack. Like, re- I was nervous about the What's Up Junkies because oh, it, it's, it's trying to be very prepubescent, as it were. Uh, it, it, it's doing its best. Jay, Jason would like that. Um, for those of you that uh, do not realize that Jason's not here, I'm sure you haven't missed him. Um, he's out hanging with the young boys in the yeah. wilderness this week. So pray for the pray for the children. Essentially, <laughs> pray for the children because <laughs> because who knows what Scoutmaster uh, Jason's out there doing? You know. Um, yeah. How was your week? 
Mine? Did you have one? Yeah. I did stuff. I don't know what. But, yeah. Oh, no, that's right. Uh, nothing extraordinary this week, which is good. Uh, Wednesday, just sat in the office and, like, was able to just go at the keyboard and, like, knock stuff out. And it felt fantastic to just get a bunch of stuff that's been looming and partially done, just finished. Um, but that's, honestly, that's the highlight of my week so far. That is actually awesome because I, you didn't look at the title that I gave this show, did you? No. Uh, look up the title real quick. Look at the title of uh, the live that you're watching there and read it aloud to the kids. Oh, right. Because this was a, t- a placeholder title. I didn't know what to put. I tried <laughs> to put... The boy smoked the real house unfinished business no, and talk about stuff. No, that's not the title. You have to look for the one, uh, hashtag 125 and what it says. It's not coming up. I don't see it. Uh, you can't see it. Yeah, I, I cannot see this piece of information. Yeah, all right. It is, uh, I called it number 125, partially finished business. Partially finished business. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Which I got, was, I don't know, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> once, once you Beautifully it. ironic. Yes, absolutely. No, it's, really, that's They've spot been on this me. week. They've been telling me since I was young, I have a beautiful mind. A beautiful mind. Something, something like That's my interpretation anyways. That's the long and short of it. <laughs> that's where I'm going with it. Uh, so how was your week? Uh, my week was pretty decent. I uh, went back to work after being on vacation, right? So it's always a, a little tough. I found myself in a position where every day I come home and I am exhausted at 3.30 when I get home from work, which is not, I guess, entirely uncharacteristic of me, but specifically like coming back from vacation, being on uh, the diet, all that happy yeah. stuff kind of commingling together. Add this heat wave in too. Exhausted. Yeah. That might be part of it too. Because you just don't want to do nothing. No. Uh, So, yeah, I've been getting home and like plopping on the bed and unfortunately sometimes ending up taking a nap. The days that I don't, I usually pass out after dinner for a little while. Yeah. (laughs) But I've been losing time because you're just worn out. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm hoping it's just like a little bit of a a transitionary phase and and I'll roll back out because I already sleep too much as it is. Well, and like you said, too, you just came off a, a week not having to get up early. Not just not, a week, nine days. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's that's a lot. Um, so we went to the Leaning House last night uh, for their uh, their Summer Deck concert series, which is always incredible. If you guys haven't been to any of those shows, I recommend going to any of them. Because it doesn't even matter what kind of music it is, whether it's something that's up your alley. You might not know a single song. Um You'll still enjoy the performances because all of the musicians, except for me, are incredible. Uh, and, uh, you know, just the people that you get to hang out with. I'll tell you what, though. It was ridiculously hot last night. Yeah. And uh, so my did, solution. Did Mike Kazora keep his shirt on? Uh, mostly. Like, it never came full off, but there was a little there was, side There was side. hints, yeah. Um, but to be fair. To, to be, be fair, fair. I may have started that. You may have what? Started it. Oh, yeah, that, sorry. It's it's weird being over here. I got the headphones and you don't and part of the per, like I was going to take them off for a minute. But actually, you're pretty quiet. Yeah. Without the headphones because we're so far apart. Oh, yeah. You can't hear me here. Right. So oh. it's, it's, a, it's a whole different dynamic. You <sighs> know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but essentially. So my solution was I had several waters and I put a little hole in the tip of one of the water bottles. Just a tip. Just, just to see how it felt. Just for a second. Uh and uh, so I'm like kind of spritzing myself and Shannon and it, it ended up being a thing like I'm sp- only the people that, that want it. Yeah, you know that were I mean? in on like, it. Well, that, 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 that you weren't sneaking yes, up spraying. Okay. Not really, except for to the people that had already previously partaken. But that ended up being like the thing that was like when my wife spent 15 or 20 dollars the one time for like the fan bottle with the spray yeah. it at Disney. She's like, I ain't buying that. This is like, you know. 15 years ago. Yeah. And she came back for it like two hours later. Like, this is ridiculous. I need this thing. Yeah. That it's was too hot. That was the thing that got it done. But uh, the best surprise of all last night is I go downstairs to use the restroom. Out of my peripheral, I see something in the lounge. And I turn. And who is it? Chichingo. Oh, it nice. It is the first time I've seen him. Yeah, he hasn't been out. Since he's had all the medical news. And um, I am not kidding. Or exaggerating when I tell you that I hugged him in excess of five minutes between all the hugs. Like yeah. I, I held him and did not let him go like he was my childhood teddy bear. You're making up for lost time. I just miss that guy so much. Yeah. He he is such a great uh great human being and um it's it's 
our lives have all been a little dimmer without them. Yeah, you know? it, it, it sucks not having them around. Uh, we had Patty stopped out here uh, about two weeks ago. It was nice to see her, you know, hung out for a little bit. She just kind of sat, chilled, did her thing. You know, you could tell she just needed out and about. And you could tell she's exhausted, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part that never gets talked about, right, is always the, the other person that has yes. to help with everything. Of course. And yeah, it's for us. It's always been about the pair of them. Um, but the the you know, fortunately, we've been able to see Patty. You know, we've gotten a little bit of her around. So it's yeah, like, but man, I I have not seen Chichingo. No, not at all. It's, it's been very sad. So yeah, it's, it's been a couple months. Great to get him back. Yeah, and did you, I mean he still got more hair than I do? He still looks better than I do. Uh, um, he's still his wonderful, um, cuddly self. You know, that's I mean, what we like to what hear. Else, what else is there? You know. Yeah, no, nah, it's good to see them actually starting to at least creep back in, being able to get out and about a little bit. Oh, hold, hold, hold on. So I'm not keeping up quite too much with the live here. All right. I would just like to take this moment to say, screw you, Ryan Seneca. Because I am not closing it in my 50s. I have not hit 40s yet. So <laughs> I'm missing comments here. He said it, it, when, I, when he was talking about, I, I was talking about being uh, tired coming home from work. Ah, uh, and uh, I think it's further up. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's I like see three it there. Past. You're closing in on your 50s. Yeah, you're closing in on a fucking. You're shut up. It's <laughs> <laughs> about it. So I'm going. Because, I mean, we are closing in on our 50s. Well, technically, always closing everybody in on, is yeah. closing in on their 50s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just not all of us are getting there as fast as you. So. Yes. Well, you know, uh, they've, they've always said I'm fast. You know what I mean? Uh, not, Doug, not at many things, but one or two. Dougie Doug, what's up, buddy? Hey, Dougie. Uh, uh, so, you know what? Shall we actually talk about the cigar news? Because we have ooh. it in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I keep going to update it, and I'm like, I don't think I've read it. We haven't touched on yet. a lot, yeah. So, and it, just take a quick look and proofread for me. Yeah. And make sure that I am not uh, mistaken, because I don't want to double up on it or whatever. But I, I'm fairly certain that we have not used this stuff yet. The second one we did. Uh, oh. Uh, that's the only one that we've talked about. Well, we yeah. was that recently because that's the begin to ship, not the um, the announcement of the cigar. Oh, okay. So I think we're cool, right? All right. Yeah. It's time for the cigar news, brought to you by Insert Ad Here. If you'd like your name to be here, send money to Corey at wherever you see him. Yeah, uh, I like it. Number one, this one is important and relevant. In a landmark ruling, the United States Supreme Court has struck down the Chevron deference. Uh, with this ruling, the Supreme Court has cut back sharply on the power of legal, I'm sorry, federal agencies to interpret laws as they administer. Uh, the Chevron deference is a precedent created by the court in a 1984 case, Chevron versus NRDC. Uh, Chevron essentially allowed agencies wide latitude in interpreting the scope of their own authority in cases where laws are passed by Congress uh, that were ambiguous. So that, like, pretty well sums up the government right there, yeah, right? like all like, of it. Like, there's a rule that says we can walk by your house. We're going to open that up and just say, that means we can come in and take anything yeah. we want. <laughs> yeah, it, it's... <laughs> Essentially, yeah, right? stretched. So is that, the reason this is relevant to this show and to us, if you're asking yourself why and scratching your head, is because the FDA regulations, that's what a lot of the fight has been about, right, is um, whether or not they have the authority um, to regulate the premium cigar industry. Uh, and those loose interpretations have probably given them a lot of power in that fight. So this may drastically cut that back and help us. To get them off our yes, backs, right? back off. Miami Cigar and Company has begun to ship the Nesta Miranda Grand Reserve of 2024. This is a cigar was launched in, uh, at the trade show in May. Uh, the release of the Grand Reserva coincides with the 35th anniversary of Miami Cigar and Company. It's the first Grand Reserva release since 2012. Produced at the My Father Cigar Factory, the Grand Reserva uh, 2024 features. 100% Nicaraguan tobaccos, making it a Puro. This is a 6 and one eighth by 52 Bellicoso. Miami Cigars is releasing 1,500 10-count boxes. And pricing comes in at about $18. Dollars. Dollars. I'd be interested. Dollars. Uh, General Cigar has announced the return of the Macanudo Inspirado Brazilian Shade for 2024. This is a limited edition. It was uh, last released in 21. 
Uh, it's a Brazilian-grown Connecticut shade wrapper, uh, and it includes proprietary tobacco in the filler. Macanudo Brazilian shade features. I mean, it, it just, it's just exactly what I just said. I don't know why they do this and say Yeah, they, they like to repeat it. So if this is something that you were missing, guess what? Good for you. It's back. Davidoff has announced the fourth and final installment of its Cigar History re-roll series, the Davidoff Grand Cru Dia Dimas. Uh, Phoenix. There was another one at the end there on the other other end. Cigar History Rerolled is a series where Davidoff has brought back special iterations from its white uh, band lines for limited runs. Uh, in the case of this guy, uh, this is a new size. And it is a six and three quarter by 50 produced at, uh, produced at Cigars Davidoff in the Dominican Republic. The bun consists of an Ecuadorian wrapper over Dominican binder and fillers. While Davidoff has not di- disclosed all of the blend details, it has said the filler includes wine cask aged Dominican San Vicente second. Ooh. So that's kind of interesting. So yeah. if you're a Davidoff guy, keep your eye out for that one. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's that sounds intriguing. Uh, I've never had a wine cask aged one. I mean, we've done the bourbon barrels and stuff like that, but never a wine cask. I feel like that's just the um, just like the hot lingo. You know what yeah. I mean? You throw in there that it was aged in something that makes everybody all excited. Yeah, but like, I mean, it, it does impart a flavor for sure. It can, but are you aware of the fact that whether it's advertised or not, literally every single one of uh, Perdomo's cigars is barrel aged? Right. Like, it, they, they advertise it on some and not on others, and you'd think, well, well no, you don't taste it on every one of their cigars. Um, but that's actually a trick that uh, Nick Perdomo found um, to give one extra stage of fermentation. You know, essentially, like, you can only get so far with your typical fermentation in Pallones, I guess. And doing the barrel aging gives you one more. Do you know um, Do you know if they're virgin barrels or if they're... Like, no, they're not. They're not? Correct. Okay. I do believe... I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain. Don't don't give me, like, 100%. Yeah, I'd be enough. curious to see where he sources the barrels from. That. Like, what, who he's getting them from, what they are. You he's know. got the resources for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's just like, you know, it, are they rum barrel, like, rum casks or... I believe they're bourbon because they actually have the bourbon. Ba- wasn't that correct? The bourbon barrel age series. Do they specify or is it just a yeah, barrel age? They had the the. Oh no, I don't know. Well, have to now, do now you got me questioning. But no, if only uh, we had a producer that wasn't also a host of the show. I know, right? <laughs> they, they could actually like spend some time doing that. No, it 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 has me curious because like maybe the ones that he specifies are bourbon barrel aged, and the rest of them are virgin barrel aged, or awesome. something like that. So there's a lot of different ways that they could do it. Um, but I'd be, yeah, I'd be very curious to see how it would work. It says right there, bourbon. Uh, yeah, on, the Habana. On the ones that are advertised as but, such, yeah. that are named as such, though. So. so it makes me wonder if, if they're all, like, virgin barrel aged, and then those are bourbon, or, you know, what the, what the process is. And then it also makes me wonder, too, like, how, how many uses can you get out of a single barrel? So, like, you know, the first round of it, is it gonna? It's gonna impart the flavor faster, or is it gonna impart more? Well, here's the thing about barrels too: is like wine barrels, bourbon barrels, any kind of alcoholic barrel. There is, like, n- they are not like a car. When you take them off the lot, they do not lose value. They almost right. increase, right? So, like, one company builds them, uses them for wine, then they go and get used for this, and they get used for that, and they just someone there's a whole like secondary market for that where these barrels have a life where they go downstream so even if he you know is going i'm getting these many uses out of it and then he probably sells to somebody else is going to or reuses the wood or whatever it happens to be yeah and that's like that could be one of those things is like okay it's a who knows maybe they chip them up into pieces and they sell them as you know uh oak staves for putting in your whiskey now it's whiskey a bourbon barrel infused with tobacco and like, I don't I, I, right. I don't know enough about it but I'd be curious to learn about you know does the tobacco I mean because obviously the tobacco is going to impart something into the wood as well well we should write that down and then uh, if we ever get Nick on this show we could ask yeah. him these, these questions because I don't it. think anybody else ever has that's I don't yeah there's just a lot of barrel questions with that but I am at Liberty Pool today um, so I thought I, this was just a tip I, I'm confused this, this uh, t- got, it took me a minute there. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to actually talk to Kevin down there about it a little bit and ask, like, hey, how would that work? Like, you know, would the leaves put anything back or so on and so forth? Like, what what is the process with the barrel? And Because, I mean, with them, you can talk to them 
on a way oh, higher they, level than yeah. I can. I mean, they they understand the chemistry of what the wood's doing and why it's doing it. So for sure, absolutely, they'll be yeah. like, "Well, you need you need uh, oak because you know oak is bred from the Cretaceous period, yeah, right? <laughs> it has to be oak from this region or that region. Like they they can go full into it, and then you know now they're playing with the ambruana, and I'd be curious to see like what would tobacco do if it was put in ambruana instead of you know just a typical oak barrel. Oh, what's up, Jeff Scales? How you doing, buddy? Ambruana. That sounds like. Uh, that sounds like. Uh, what what do they call that? Um, it, it sounds like tri- uh, Siamese triplets. Mm-hmm. Ambruana, like <laughs> three names for one girl, all yeah. mixed together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here's oh, what we're gonna do. So Sam had this idea of changing something in our script, Ooh. and uh, because it's just me and you. I'm going to put the pressure on you and make you read it. Ten four. Which is great because I've made slight alterations I to it. So you're not going to be able to just be like, roll it off the tongue. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, so our mission is to create a welcoming and engaging community for cigar enthusiasts of all levels. We strive to provide insightful reviews and in industry news, entertaining discussions to enhance the cigar experience, i.e. that lounge feel. Um, through the show, we aim to connect listeners with the rich culture of cigars, foster meaningful conversations, Celebrate the camaraderie that comes with sharing a good smoke. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, share with the show to anyone you can. We appreciate it, and it means a lot to us. Uh, and as always, thank you for the engagement and the support. And when he says lounge feel, he's not talking about what happens when you sit too close to Eric on the couch. Correct. Um, he's, he's talking about virtually the, uh, the feeling of conversation. What I find super hilarious about this is, um, I know that you did not actually generate this. You, you, you cheated a little bit. Oh, yes, 100%. Um, so the, th- the, the thing is, for me, though, it directly contradicts what we say in our intro. I know. With the review part. So I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah. But we have been kind of going back and forth. Embracing with, it a bit more. Shall we, you know, start. Yeah, you know, it's been two and a half years. I I don't think it's false advertising if nah. we kind of go. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a scale here. Yeah. Right. So, speaking of which, now that you're into it pretty far, what are your thoughts? Where are you at with it? It's so mine's getting better. Um, however, this is this is not the bestest of examples. I might need to smoke Jason's too to see if his just was to make sure. Yeah, because I think this is his. Seneca smoking it right now. <sighs> Stupid Seneca. Uh, now I th- this. So for me, for anybody out there that like uh, is wondering why people are so particular and there's so much education about the way that you light your cigar, right? The the key to it is if you don't start the cigar properly, the whole cigar is going to be not right. Yeah, you're going to be off by a little bit. Yeah, like it may not be horrible, right? But it's it's going to change the dynamic of the entire cigar smoking experience the whole way through. Yeah, you're changing the recipe essentially. It, yes, you are. So, although this cigar has gotten much better, I had a little issue, just a little bit of a void that, that quite didn't get enough filler in the uh, the tip of the cigar whenever I lit it at the foot. Um, that has corrected, and the rest of the cigar is is burning really well. You could see that. With that being said, I'm still getting the elements of something's not burning, tasting right. Like it tastes like there's an incomplete burn. So, excuse me. What I would say is in the beginning, it had a distinct underfilled, too loose of a draw feel, and there's still remnants of that in here. But again, handmade product, what are you going to do? They're not all perfect. I, In my experience, most of the cigars that I've had underfilled have been box-pressed. That's a, and and also I'm not like an expert on the whole Rojas, um, you know, uh, catalog. But I don't think he does much with box press, has he? Um, he d- he does enough. I mean, he does a good bit okay. of it. Okay, yeah. Well, because there there's there's another brand that I specifically think of, which is I hate that my hand is just like just right there sometimes, just and distracting so, and, it and looks that's it. gigantic. Yeah. Um, but so, like, uh, Oscar Valadares, is one of my absolute favorite cigar manufacturers. Um, I, the, their box press, it doesn't, doesn't hit me right. You know what I mean? Like, yep. the, the 2012 series, I think that they're underfilled, and I think that because they don't do a ton of box press stuff, you know, the master. May, maybe that's not their strongest suit. Yeah, it's not their, their strength in, in things. And it, 
look, I, I, we don't know what it takes to make a cigar. Like, we, you know, we have a good idea, better than most, but we, we have no idea, like, on the grand scale of it. But they, when they box press, they have to underfill because you're squishing it, mm-hmm. you know, and it's getting that ratio correct. So, you know, a little bit off in, in a box press is going to show itself so much more than a little bit off because it, you're already on the low end of the spectrum. And if, depending on the way that they roll, and to bar, you know what I mean, if you're, yeah. if you're using the tubes, whatever you might be doing, um, I think that I've had examples of a box press that was actually denser because of the box press, but because of the way that they did the fillers, it still left good draw channels in it. And, and that's what I like yeah. because it's like a, a concentrated experience of that flavor and it won't roll off the table. Yeah. Um, I'm, best example of that I've had is the Red Meat Lovers. That cigar is heavy and I haven't had anybody complain about a draw issue on it at all. Actually, the only one that I've ever had anybody say anything negative about was the Beef Stick, the non-box pressed one. Uh, yeah, so for me too, I would say like... Um, that that's that's also going to be dependent on your wrapper leaf, right? Whether it can take that abuse once right. you box press it, is it are you going to be able to box press it, um, and concentrate it? Because if yeah. you've got all of that stuff inside, and then you're trying to put it on the wrapper to hold that, you you might not do so hot. But um, there have been a, other examples too, like an Aladino, which is their bo- their Maduro. I think most of their Maduros are all but press. one. Yeah. All, all of them except for the Lancero. Uh, they're incredible. Yeah. And they're all box Like yeah. you said, except for the Lancero, they're all bad box press. And they're fantastic. I love all of them. But I've had um, uh, Aladino participated in something with TCA, I think, where they essentially box pressed something that normally wasn't to see how it changed the characteristics of that. And that cigar was not wasn't a good the same. experience for me. Yeah. And and so you may have to take into account that, like, there's guys that do most of the box pressing, and then you have, okay, you normally make this cigar, now box press it. That's probably going to be in the consideration as well. Yeah, I, it makes you wonder, like, because I would say vast majority of the time that they're box pressing, and I'm saying this with no authority, this is purely an assumption, is we like this cigar, we like this blend, but when we crank the ratio up to where it needs to be to make the round one, it's not good. So we need to take just a little bit off. How do we do that? Okay, we underfill it, box press it, now it'll smoke fine, and we get the recipe that we wanted. That's that's and, and, my and assumption for it. I was actually contemplating in my mind, is that why some of these cigars aren't awesome? Is because um, they're blended to be round, and then once box pressed because you have to make them a little lighter right does something get left out something's lacking at that Um, point but the funny thing is like that 2012 i love the flavor profile of those cigars it's just so loose and underfilled that it just uh i i I can't get excited about it plus they smoke in like uh, you smoke a toro in like 30 minutes yeah they smoke they they go really fast yeah um i had I'll so, take all. I'm, all I wanted to say was I'll, I'm going to take another stab at this one because yeah, Rojas is like almost always a fantastic yeah. experience for me. So yeah, ne- never done, never done me wrong. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't think I've ever had a construction issue with any of them, and I've smoked a ton of the tacos, um, and then the blue bonnet as well. The one thing I will say, his Lanceros, they they always smoke. Perfect. Well, he's small, small yeah. ring you know. Yeah, they but they they always smoke just spot on. Uh, something I got a couple of now in the humidor, Rosa Sharon and the Alma del Fuego by uh, Rosa Sharon by Southern Draw and the Alma del Fuego by uh, Placencia. They're both box pressed Lanceros, and that just I don't know. They just feel weird. Like that's the one shape of a cigar that I'm like, it's too small for this. But been there. <laughs> But the Rosa Sharon is one of my absolute favorite Connecticut's, yeah. and the Lancero flavor wise is the best. So, like, it's a real awkward position for me to be in. But the point of this show is, and like something I committed to when we started, it's like we we had conversations about like what are we going to say if we don't like a cigar, right? right? And and we don't ever want to crap on any, but yeah, because because there's somebody out there that loves it. There's somebody out there that's worked super hard on it. 
and we are one perspective. Yeah. Like we should not be taking taken as like, you know, don't the, try this or whatnot. The yeah. people to listen to. Like we are just a, a couple of goofballs giving our opinions on things. Um, with that being said, um, even if it's a cigar brand that I love, if the cigar isn't great, I'm not I'm not going to act like it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, it doesn't I, help I, anybody to do that. No. It, it, so I'm going to tell you how it is. As much as it breaks my heart to be like, that, hey, this isn't great. Yeah, it didn't work. But we all know that happens. Mm-hmm. So. And it, it's, I think it's nice to have an outlet where you can see it. Like, all right, these guys know how to smoke a cigar. They know how to light a cigar. And they're having a problem, too. Yeah, because I think some people out there do think that, like, um, hey, what was wrong with this? Like, uh, normally I smoke these and they're great, and this one wasn't. Did I do something wrong? And and sometimes maybe, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a good chance you did. But sometimes, man, like, there, there's always going to be that shot that you got the one where the guy that rolled it that day, you know, just had a headache <laughs> or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that. that's the kind of. He got of, interrupted halfway through. Like, right. 10,000 things. It, and it's it's such a uh, uh, a wild skill to be able to feel something with your hands and know that it's going to be right when you're doing this with tobacco. No, yeah, yeah like you did visual. that. You, you did when, that when you're bunching tobacco in your hand and you go, no, we need a little bit more here. We need a little bit yeah. less. And you watch them making those changes. And you're, you're not like, talking. You're talking a little yes, bit, oh, like yes. a, a, t- a minuscule amount. And yes. they still can notice it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a hat, like a, a, a tenth of an ounce of this, like, oh, this is too much. So anything that that is uh, so dependent on the blend and, like, the little bits and pieces of things that are in there and then is being done by hand by just artisans that are, yeah. that are almost machines, <laughs> they're still going to get one off every yeah. once in a while. Mistakes will be made. Excellent. No, I... I would say the vast majority of the burn issues I see here in the shop are user error. But the vast majority of the issues I see in the shop, the person smoking doesn't even notice it. You know, right. like I'm, I'm watching it burn this way and do this. And I'm like, I know, I know what he did wrong, but he's enjoying his cigar. So I don't, it, that's always a, like a, a tough decision for me. Is like, I want to tell you what best practice is on this, but I also just want you to sit and enjoy your cigar. Right. So I don't want to, be that guy and be like, hey, did you know if you did this instead, it's better? And it's like, oh, okay, that that's great, but I was in, I was doing this, so just leave me be. And we all have those too, right? Like you have the cigars that you really want to like put all of your attention into, yeah. right? And there are the ones where you're like, it's, I've smoked this all the time. I'm busy doing other things or I'm engaged in a conversation or I'm paying attention to something else. And if it's not the most perfect experience, I don't care because it's just kind of – one of the things I'm doing, not the thing I'm doing. Yeah. Well, and, and it's funny because it's not even like price. When I see someone smoke the call to arms wrong, it breaks my soul a little bit because I smoke so many of those. And yeah. I, I, I mean, I've smoked since I've opened. I've you're, probably smoked you're, you're 150 talking, of them, 200 of them. You're talking about somebody uh, ordering a steak well done. Y- yeah. And it's like, you're like, you do yeah. you, but like, you're killing me. Yeah. I, I mean, I smoke a lot of that cigar. And I know, like, I've never had a construction issue with it. By the way, it comes out of the same factory from the same r- rollers as this cigar. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and it, I mean, Makes that sense. just speaks to their credibility. Like, I love everything that they do as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, but it's funny because you would never taste a uh, stolen throne cigar and think that it tastes anything like. Uh, something Rojas like they're not well made at the same place is indicative of the quality not the ingredients right Right. like they're going to source tobacco from different places right yeah you're probably going to have some commonality but it's not going to be you know they're not tasting the same at all you know but but even like uh you know southern draw the jacob's ladder i love that cigar i never would have guessed that was an aj product yeah i never never would have guessed that was made at aj's factory well that might be indicative, too, of, of uh, and I feel like I've said that word a lot today, indicative. Yeah. Um, it might be um, pointing to AJ had less to do with the blend of that. Right. Just because it said his factory doesn't mean he blended it. AJ Fernandez, 
usually just has his hands on everything in, in the cookie jar, right? So, yep. like, if you have something with AJ's name on it or something that's coming from his one of his bazillion brands, he probably had an influence over how it was blended. Um, but if you have a company out there like Southern Jar that's like, no, I'm making the decisions. This is what I want. Uh, this is what I want out of the product. Then it's not being blended to AJ's taste at that point, right? It's it's being made for the customer. Um, so you're going to have influence sometimes if if it's allowed to be. But at, at the end the result is going to be what's the customer asking for. And if the customer is asking for this and he wants to do that, well, guess what? You're he's going to have to make this because that's what they're asking for. So, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. So next next week, uh, next Sunday, we are going to uh, be doing the show a little bit early. We're going to be going live at 8.30. Um, we'll be cutting this one off in about 25 minutes here because Sam has to roll. So this is going to be a little bit of a condensed show. Um, but next week, we're going to be in a rush because my baby girl, who uh, just turned 18 two days ago, uh, is uh, graduated high school this year, and uh, we got a party for her so this is gonna take my effort and focus elsewhere other than this show and so um we'll have to get started early to be able to squeeze you guys in here and, and not have to skip out on doing it but can you believe that i have a an adult child no i'm no. not even no you're a man child yourself so yes. it, it, it so you said that and I, I snuck behind i was filling my coffee up and i'm sitting there and i'm like Man, I'm not ready for mine to grow up. Like, there's seven already. Think about it. You've only known me for two and a half years. Yeah. But you've known my daughter during that time, and my, my son, too. Isn't yeah. that, like, wild to just look back and go, like, wait a minute. Yeah. Shouldn't she be, like, a, a junior in high school or yeah. something like that? No? She's yeah, not. I mean, she's 15. In your head, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's when I met her, so she's 15. It, right. It, I don't know. It's, it screws me up. And then, but I, I don't know. Everybody says it like it goes fast. And man, it it's the the first seven with the kids has already gone so fast, and it only gets faster. Well, I actually have a theory on why it goes fast. So there's there's two different frames of thought on it. It's when you don't see the kid often, it means every time you see them, they're significant change, yeah. right? So that's one way. But for the parent, I think what happens is you, as a kid. You're going year by year, right? Like, you're going, oh, okay, Christmas, birthday, Christmas, birthday. And then it gets to, okay, 16th birthday. That's what you're looking forward to. Yeah. Then 18, then 21. Um, so, you like, all of these milestones for you are kind of further and further apart. Whereas, once you have a kid, they are different every week. Yeah. You are measuring in weeks. You are measuring in months. And the change is then significant and accelerated again. And it kind of makes you go like, oh, wow. But, I mean, you know, just don't drink too much, and you'll remember all the time, yeah. and you could go back in your head and go, huh. Well, that's what, uh, you know, half breaks my heart right now is, like, I miss so much because I'm here. But the whole point of being here is so that I can be there more in the future, right? Like, I'm, sure. I'm investing in this now, and I'm doubling down, and I'm spending all my time here at the shop so that in three, four, five years, I can be in a position like some of the other shop owners we know that – Two days a week, I'm, I'm in the shop working. One day a week, I'm in there checking on stuff. And it's a machine that runs after that, you know, right. so that it gets to that point. But right now, it just hurts because it's like, all right, you know, Dad, can you, you know, I'm, I'm missing a, a horse show today. And I'm like, it's killing me. And, it, and it's, you're doing it in cubic years too, mm-hmm. right? Because the one thing that, that really sets you apart from most people is like most people that have two or three kids they have them a little bit apart. Yeah. And so it spreads it out a little bit. Maybe you get uh, a better chance with the younger one. Yeah. Um, but you're doing it all at once. So everything is cubic. Yeah. That it, that, 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 that could be a fun, like, uh, triplet shirt. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've little actually little. been sitting here contemplating it since you said it. Now, like, my, my wife has mom cubed. Like, she yeah, has oh, that yeah. shirt. She has a couple. Uh, That's cool. That kind of thing. But no, it, it's. But, but every minute you're missing, you're missing times three. Yeah. Well, that's uh, because because that's it. You're done. Yeah, there, there's no mas. Right. It, you know, it's closed. But no, I like. What's Taco Bell have to do with it? What's that? No mas. No mas. Oh, maybe I'm no there. more. Um, I'm there. I got it. Um, but no, it, it like first day of preschool, I took them there. Last day of preschool, I picked them up. First day of you know, I've made the first and the last with school. 
that's one of the things like I'm pretty adamant. I mean, I closed the shop for both of those because I'm not missing that. Yeah. There's, there's certain milestones I'm not missing. You know, I was there for walking. I was there for talking, you know, talking for, back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, one of them specifically, man, just she, she has a mouth. She, yeah. That's funny. Oh, well, so, um, oh, man. We we kind of got back at you. Restarted an idea in my brain, and then uh, and then I I lost it again. Oh, I know what it was. So uh, the thing for you guys is Britt's busy too. Oh yeah. So like you guys get help. Um, when my kids were little and I was in the oil field, I at least felt good about that trade off because I was like, okay, I'm not there for this. I'm not there for um, you know this important thing or that one. Yeah. But like. My wife can be all the time because I am Miss Most yes, of that, it. She is always there. And when you weigh the two, who would you rather have anyway? You know what I mean? So, right. like, they didn't miss much. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I could always feel good about that because I know that me not being there meant that she could. Yeah. And, like, that's the I, – I think you're going to look back and, and I don't think you're going to be super sad about it because you're going to realize that that sacrifice – paid off yeah well and and that's one of those things like no matter what you do i think you're gonna i don't, I don't like the word regret i, I despise the word regret but regret. like you're gonna look back on your regrets with uh less desirable like you know yeah you know it would have been nice to go to this this or show like you know especially when 20 years from now she's competitive in it and it's that's her whole livelihood or something you know not to say that's the case here but like if that becomes a thing, it's like, yeah, that's great, but I still missed the first one. It, but you're always going to have things like that that you're going to miss. Like, it's just, it's part of, you're going to miss stuff. You know, what is it, the uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out. It's like, it, it's this always there for everybody. Just all Taco Bell commercials today, I feel like. We're just spouting off there. Was it Live, Live Moss, FOMO. I think that's all stuff that they, <laughs> they came up with, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think that's a, a FOMO. Yeah, that, that's just an acronym. No, but but it came from it was a campaign ad. Oh, it was, was it? Somebody created it, and I'm pretty sure it was Taco Bell, but it might have been a different <laughs> fast food chain. I, see, I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, they uh, at least that was the first I ever heard of it, and it's when it became big. So I don't know. Yeah, it's you know, chicken or the egg. What came first, the the popular statement or the um, or the advertisements around the statement that made it even bigger than it was going to be? You know, like Hawk Tool. Um, the less known Avenger. The, the less known Avenger. Uh, yeah. So I had uh, the secondary band on mine. It was glued to the wrapper. So somebody missed on that a little bit. So I Whoopsie. actually pulled a nice little chunk off, which kind of sucks. But I'm curious. I'm getting to that part now. So I'm curious to see if I can taste the difference because I'm missing a half an inch of wrapper all the way around. Yeah. So I'll be curious to see how it changes for a couple minutes here. That's what they call... Uh um, manual intervention for complexity. That that's how I'm gonna choose to look at it. Oh yeah, yeah. Why why not? You could be like, oh, well, that was an oopsie, or you could be like, yeah, oh, this is yeah, this is a tweak to to. Uh, it's an experiment, you know. Yeah. What I mean? No, that's I, like I'm excited to smoke it and see the difference in it because like, I mean, you've smoked a bunch of shaggy foot unfinished, however you want to call it. Yeah. Um, it does make a huge difference smoking that first half inch of it. And then when you hit that wrapper, you can feel it change. If, unless yeah, they blended no, no, no. it for similarity. No, no, no. Uh, you, you're right. That's the absolute intention. My, the, hesitant, uh, the hesitation that you're sensing on my behalf is the fact that I don't, I don't think that I consume and think of cigars in the way that most people do. Because generally speaking, the first half inch or one mm. inch of a cigar is not to me what the cigar is. Uh, the cigar really starts getting kicking, and I love it or don't, based on what happens at around the first third. But specifically, that first half an inch, generally, unless it's something that really hits you right away, yeah. it doesn't do a lot. So it's like, how much does that change for me? How much reality? does it actually change in it? Yeah, right. Now, for the average smoker, probably significantly, but for me, probably yeah. Not you're as ignoring much. that first little bit, anyways. Yeah. That's that's always one of those things. Is, I never liked it because people were like, oh, ignore the first half an inch. No, it's part of the cigar. I, I, like, I enjoy the ramp up. I enjoy the seeing it change in that first half inch into what it's you know becoming and turning into. And then I think that first inch and a half, 
or so of the stick is really when it has the biggest developmental change. And then it's incremental after that. It's not the first inch and a half. It's the last inch and a half. It's the only inch and a half. <laughs> that for me, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, unfortunately, all I have is the first inch and a half. So, uh, you know. <laughs> so uh, my whole life, like uh, something that I think maybe most people that have like a normal social mindset um, don't like, uh, that maybe makes, makes them feel a little bit uncomfortable with, with what I do. Uh, but, but I ask, like, I'm not afraid to ask people stuff or, you know, like, uh, try to get the thing or that's just how I am. Right. Yeah. So if you don't ask for the sale, you're never going to get it. And that's my mindset about every interaction in life. So for about the last couple of weeks, I've been doubled down on like, I really would like, and and this is not a commitment to anything that's for sure going to happen, but I want to get a tattoo artist on the show. I think that for a long time we've thought that would be a fun concept. Mm-hmm. So anybody that I know that has tattoos, I've been going like, hey. hey where'd you get it? Where, who? Because um, I've talked to some people and, and, and on levels maybe that, that just aren't right for this show. Like, like okay, you're, maybe you're too well-known, too big of a deal. Um, we need something a little lower end. And I need some stuff fixed. and. Um, so, but, it, but it's been everybody. I'd be like, hey, man, how long has it been since you've had a guy? Like, especially if they have good color, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. And so I'll just interact with, with anybody that I see that has tattoos. And that, after a couple of weeks of this, has finally led me to where I was at the Leaf and Beat in the Strip. And there was a couple sitting there. And I rolled up and says, hey, you know, they both had it. And I was like, hey, do you guys have anyone specific? And they're like, well, we're not from here. Like, we are, we're just visiting. I'm visiting my brother, but my brother is actually a tattoo artist, and he's going to be meeting us here in 10 minutes. Mm. Let me hook you guys up. And I'm like, okay. I think I come in, and, and I went and, and talked to him very briefly, and, and I could tell he kind of felt like, oh, really, do we have to have that conversation now? Yay, so I didn't know if work. he was going to be enthusiastic about it. Um, and he wasn't at the time, but we exchanged information, and then I talked to him later, and he seemed much more enthusiastic, which is cool. Because when I Googled him, and I started checking out the stuff I'm on. His place is crazy. Yeah, I haven't dude. looked at it yet. You sent me the info. It I just haven't looked. Wild. They do like a of there's in the Google Google Photos. There's a video of them doing like somebody just doing a walk through the place and doing a tour. And there's a downstairs. And this is in downtown, I believe. Yeah. And um, in the beginning, it's like, oh, okay, this is cool. And they go downstairs, and I'm like, I want to do the show there. This place is awesome. I wonder oh, yeah. if he'd like let us do like, uh, <laughs> hey. The shops closed. So it's just you know. Yeah. Could we get away with smoking? Smoking a cigar just a little place? bit. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's a tattoo it's, shop. There's probably some smoking. It's something. probably not okay. Pro- it's, oh, it's, definitely it's probably not in that not area. Okay. Mm. Um, no, it, you know, that's the one variable about our show that's a non-negotiable. Is we 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 have to be able to smoke to do this. It, it right. it's kind of a, a key element to this. And that's it's funny too because like, uh, you know, there's some discussion about. Just just branding things in a way that get past the algorithm that screw us up from being accessible to new people that might not find us otherwise, which is why your help is so important when you guys share our content with people that you think might have an interest in it. You, you guys are our primary source for growing our audience because there are algorithms built into pretty much everything that say, Oh, cigars, that's a bad word. Junkies, that's a yeah. bad word. Oh, that's worse. We're this not is- going to make this easily accessible to people. Um, but, uh, the problem is some of the things that we're flirting with kind of rely on maybe 50% about alcohol and tobacco, yeah. right? which I think would be beneficial to most people and make this show a, more interesting to people that don't smoke cigars because yeah. maybe there's something in it for most people drink. Um, but we cannot do that if we're doing the show on Sunday mornings. <laughs> so like there, Jason was going like, well, what are we doing for this? When are we, when are we going for this? And I'm like, well, we kind of can't. If that's yeah, how we're going to do it, yeah. we can't because on a good day, one out of the three of us can drink. Yeah. <laughs> and, and on a lot of days, none of us can. Right. So how do you brand this as a show that's about alcohol and tobacco if right. you can't have alcohol? <laughs> yeah. It's like, what, what do we, how do we pursue this because okay. it's, it's bastardized? And how do we pursue this 
other side because we can't actually do that while we do the show. <laughs> right. Most of the time. It's 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 funny. And, you know, I don't trust Jason to do the homework on Saturday night because he's going to get plastered and forget everything about <laughs> the alcohol. But he comes, he's like, oh, no, I remember it being good, and then I remember nothing. And then I woke up, and I pooped, and I hacked my lung up, and here I am. The first 37 of my drink were fantastic. <laughs> I remember that. Now, it's it's... We'll get there. It's one of those fun little growing pains, I think, is more th- what it is than anything. Uh, yeah, fun, fun. That's the key word. Uh, uh, so let's welcome to the group another one of your clan, I'm guessing, Steve Davis. Mm-mm. No? Uh, no. Nope. Not one of yours? No, nope. PCC guy. Ooh. Oklahoma cigar lovers and Angela Kelly. Um, what are your final thoughts on this cigar? I think that what I... Th- thought it was is not what I had today so it it is much better than I wasn't excited to smoke this one I I, like I said I've had two of them before both of them I just was meh on yeah Uh, this is far more exciting than I remember it being Uh, and that could also be the the uh the age right like if you had them a little early maybe um I I don't know how close I had I had had mine spread out pretty well okay but yeah no like if they were both PCA samples or something like that it'd be different um but no that I had one at PCA from PCA, and then I had one like a year later. Okay, Both so it should have been and rested and ready. Yeah, to go. it was just, it was nothing wrong with it. It was just underwhelming, and I don't like from him. I don't expect that, um, but no, overall, really, really enjoying it. Um, like I said, I'm going to go back to it. I actually might take one of these to Liberty Pool with me and smoke it while I'm there. New branding for the show. Welcome to Underwhelmed with Underwhelmed. Corey and Sam. <laughs> that would actually be a good, like, I try to set the bar low with my <laughs> naming. You know what I mean? So be, it wouldn't be a bad one. Today on Underwhelmed, we smoke the un- underrated. <laughs> I still like the Where's My Pants podcast. Mm. I think that one just rolls off the tongue really too well. Fantastic. Too. Absolutely. It just so, rolls off because you've had to say it so many times. Sure. Um, Normally, I don't care where they are. It's everybody else. They're going, where's your pants? <laughs> <laughs> what are your final thoughts on it? I mean, um, unfortunately, I didn't have one that I, I, I think it's it's just, you know, you just I got, got turned out. Yeah. If you get a if you get a Two roll of, in a row, if you get a roll of firecrackers and there's 100 on there, you know, chances are probably one of them. Yeah. Not gonna pop quite as well as the others. Oopsie. And that happens. And uh, so I'm not going it, to. It's Rojas. I love. Normal. Yeah. I love everything he makes. I will go back and try it again for certain. I'll buy one from you. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's part of the adventure and the journey. If they were all good, it wouldn't be fun to, you know, look around, I guess. You'd just be like, hey, I'm just going to smoke yeah. the good one. No problem. Uh, make sure you guys stop in and hang out with us uh, next Sunday when we're going to do this show live uh, early. It's going to be 8.30 yeah. a.m. We'll be, uh, be up and running, doing the show for certain. Otherwise, uh, I am grounded for the rest of my life. So uh, it'll be an early one. We are going to smoke the pissed off Kristoff. Uh, Jason should be here for that one, I think, I'm hoping. Because yeah, I think he said he will be. That, he has to be here yeah. when we smoke that. It, if he can't if he's be not here, here we we'll smoke something cigars. different. Yeah, that one yeah. needs to be him. He's been looking forward to that one. So uh, in the meantime, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Hope that we see you again next week. And uh, do the things like subscribe, share, say the thing. Salut. Hey.